whatever you're needing, whatever you're in need of in this place right now, you have come to the place to receive it. You have come to the place to receive the peace, the peace, the peace, the peace. Is that sweet spot in the spirit? The peace. to enjoy what God has given you. Some of us can't enjoy the life that he has, the breath that you breathe, the activities of your own life. We can't enjoy just the simple things in life. Peace. To enjoy our children. Peace. To enjoy the very homes that we live in. We live in there, but there's no peace. Come on, lift your hearts to the God of peace. Lift your hearts to the God of peace. Peace I give you. Peace I give you. Peace I give you. Peace. Receive his peace. That's just all you have Receive it. God, I thank you for your peace. Your unfailing peace. Your undeniable peace. The peace of God that surpasses all that I can think, all my understanding, anything. That, how can you give me peace when I'm going through what I'm going through? Because I'm the God of peace. I'm the God of peace. And I release the peace of God in this place today. The peace of God over you. That it will not just be here during this moment, but it's the peace that will walk with you. The peace that will talk with you. The peace, like David said, yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? Because he was at peace, that his God was with him. His God will comfort him. Jerebo shaka. Release that peace over you right now. Receive his peace. I just believe somebody here, you need peace. You just need the peace of God. And that's what you come for. And listen, you don't have to wait for me. You don't have to wait for a certain period. You don't have to wait till the end of the service. You don't have to wait. When you walk in his presence, in his presence is peace. The Bible says that in God's presence, is the fullness of joy and every pleasure forevermore. What is it you need? Peace. Somebody else, you need help. You need help. God, I need your help. The Bible said he's a present help in the time of trouble. You just close your eyes and lift your heart and just begin to let God know. Let him in. He knows what you need before you even ask him. Help me, Lord. The good thing about him is that, amen, praise God, you don't have to so much blot it out where you say, Lord, help me with blase this, help me with this and that, where you afraid of the person next to you. All you got to do is say, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And when Jesus hears your cry of help, the Bible said he'll stop. to that cry. Peace. Help me, Lord. Wholeness. Joy. Unforgiveness. Help us, Father. Just stay there for a minute, Lord. See, we don't have to rush the Holy we, we, we need him in here. We need his presence in here. Just stay there for a minute. Come on. I mean, uh, you ought to be partly a uh, 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 condition for this because we spent 24 hours laying before God. 24 hours pouring our, our hearts out before God. Don't let this be an event. Don't let this just be a moment of time. But let that experience in the presence of God, let it be 
just that, an experience. Moses had an experience when he entered into the presence of God. Let it be an experience that you know that something took place in your life that has changed for your better. God, we thank you for your amazing peace and love in this place. I just sense in the Holy Spirit somebody need the peace of God. The Bible says that if we'll ask him for it, he'll give it to us. Thank you for your peace, God. Come on, thank you for your peace. 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 Come on, just bathe in his peace. We're in his presence. We're in his presence. Forget about everybody. Else. Forget about your trials. Forget about your, your tests. Forget about your storms. I heard the praise talking about we're walking in victory. We're walking in victory. Thanks be unto God, we're walking in victory. You're walking in victory. You have nothing to hold your head down and to be ashamed of. You are victorious. You're no longer a victim. But you are victorious. You're walking in victory. You're walking in victory. Victory over every test, every storm victory over every temptation. You got to decree it and declare, I'm walking in my victory. I heard an old song in my spirit we just used to sing coming up. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm no longer bound. No more chains holding me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're walking in victory. peace that surpasses what we can imagine in this place. See, because the enemy want to get you disturbed. Because when you're so disturbed and so distracted, you can't receive what God has. Receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. Just, just receive it. Some of you, just to calm as your spirit being all week long, just receive it. Just receive it. Just to calm as your, your mind has been uh, all morning long. Just receive it today. The peace of God. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And I am the God of peace. And he'll give you peace. He'll give you peace. Keep your eyes closed.
receive the, the peace that God has for you. Come on, put your hand together and give him a praise one more time. Come on, bless the Lord for it. Thank him in advance. Thank him for it. Come on, thank the Lord for it. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's what. Bless the Lord, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, hallelujah. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. And we thank him in this place. All right, praise God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, don't you feel better now? I say, don't you feel better now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Y'all ready for the word? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me say it one more time. Y'all ready for the word? All right. Amen. I think I, I started here. I think I heard about 3% of it. Amen. Come on. Say it one more time. Are y'all ready for the word? Yeah. All right. That sounds a lot better. Amen. Praise God if you would. I'm going to ask you to do it one more time. I guess y'all say, man, we, I ain't had this much exercise in church in a long time. But come on, stand on your feet one more time. If you will, get your Bibles, whatever you have, your iPad, your iPhone, wherever the Word of God is. And we're going to make a confession. You know, amen, those of you uh, that know me, y'all know how I do. Praise God. So we're going to make a confession, right? Amen. Because the Bible says faith come by what? And hearing by the Word of God. So if you will say, this is my Bible. It's God's holy Word. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I already have what it says I have. Today I'll be taught the word of the living God. And faith will come. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. I will never be the same. Look at a neighbor and say it while you say it. I'll never be the same. And look at somebody else and say, I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and give God a shout of praise one more time as you're being seated. As you're being seated, amen. Well, praise Jesus, hallelujah, thank you. Amen, praise God. I'm, boy, we finna roll in this. Y'all know, amen, 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 bye. By, by uh, the call, praise God. You know, I have a, uh, been called to preach and teach. Y'all know uh, I'm a teacher, amen. And uh, we're going to teach preaching flow. You know, as they say, preaching is for inspiration, but teaching, amen, is for impartation, amen. And so, praise God, I believe that we're going to impart some things in the Holy Spirit today. Uh, nothing that you don't know, but we're going to help you see it in new light today. Amen. Praise God. So if you would, go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And we're going to look at a few verses here. In fact, several verses here. We're going to look at. Amen. And of course, today, and I make no excuse, but today I have my, I have my conversion Bible. So my print's a little smaller. And uh, I needed plenty of light. Amen. All right. Amen. So. Amen. Romans chapter 4, and then let's look at verse number 13, reading it from the Amplified. Amen. Praise God. I don't know. Maybe they can help me get that. It would be good. Hallelujah. Yep. Yep. Well, let's go with what it says here. It says, uh, for the promise of Abraham or his posteria that he should inherit the world did not come through observing the commands of the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is, uh, if it is the adherent of the law who are to be heirs, then faith is made futile and empty of all meaning, and the promise of God is made void of all his power. For the law results in divine wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression of it neither. 
Therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith and depends entirely on faith in order that it might be given as an act of grace, unmerited favor, to make it stable and valid and guaranteed. Amen. So your faith makes it what? Stable, valid, and what? Guaranteed. It makes the promise stable, valid, and guaranteed to all his descendants not only to the devoted and adhered of the law, but, uh, but to also to those who share the faith of Abraham, who is thus <coughs> the father of us all. Somebody say father of us all. I want y'all to remember that, father of us all. We're going to come back to it. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gave life to, uh, to the dead and speak to the unexistent things that he was foretold or that he has foretold and promised as if they already exist. For Abraham, human reason for hope being gone, hope in faith, that he should become the father of many nations. As he has given promise, so numberless shall his descendant be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered the utter impotence of his own body, which was, a, excuse me, which was as good as dead because he was about 100 years old, or whom he considered, or excuse me, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's deadness, a dead womb. Verse 20. No, uh, no unbelief or distract, distrust made him waver, doubtingly question concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God, fully satisfied, and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he had promised. Amen? Draw your attention real quick here to verse number 20. In the verse number 20 in the Kings, it says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Today, I just want to encourage you all in the word to stagger not. I want to encourage you to stagger not. Somebody say stagger not. I want to encourage you to stagger not. The Bible said he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, recognizing who God is, recognizing that God is faithful recognizing that God watches over his word to perform it, recognizing that God cannot fail, recognizing that God is all-powerful. He didn't stagger because he gave glory to God. He didn't stagger because he knew God was greater than anything he was going through. He didn't stagger because, amen, if God said something and which God gave him a promise at a point when everything in his life seemed impossible, but he didn't stagger because he gave glory to God. Somebody say stagger not. Amen. He said stagger not. He staggered not. So let's look at this as we go into this. Like Abraham, the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Second Chronicles chapter uh, number 7 is where we are in this. But y'all know what it says. That was verse 12. Y'all know what it says in verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, what? Seek my face, right? Turn from their wicked ways. Amen. He says, then I will hear from heaven, and I'll forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Why is this important? Because as I said, I pray that we don't just make what happened this past weekend, 
what God is doing. I won't say this past weekend, but we won't make what God is doing an event. So like Abraham, God appeared unto uh, Solomon and said he heard his prayers. And he has made this house. Somebody say this house. Come on, say this house. He said, I have made this house a place, a van of sacrifice. So I want to encourage you to understand that there is a promise upon this house, and God heard us even though we were at another location, but because it came from the head of this house, amen, then God has made this a place where our prayers that we have prayed before him, this is a place where God says, I've heard your prayers, but when all the conditions are met, then will there be deliverance. When all the, deliver, uh, all the conditions are met, he says, what we got to do? When we humble ourselves, right? When we turn, uh, uh, when we pray, when we seek his face and we turn, then will God deliver his people. So this is why it cannot just be an event. It must be a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle because when we make a man uh, uh, worshiping, intercessing, and intercession and praying and standing on God's word and not staggering at the word of God because how I many know the Bible said that the just shall live by, come on, faith, amen, and not walk by sight but live by faith, right? And so when we make walking in the word of God a lifestyle, amen, then we will not stagger, amen, when we are believing God for something. He said don't stagger. So somebody say stagger not. So whatever promise God has spoken to you, he, amen, will perform it. We know that. But we know that between the hearing the promise and receiving the promise, there is a process. And so in Romans chapter 4 here, as we look, we see here that God clearly gives us, amen, a pattern that if we do not want to stagger, we must do what the word of God says uh, in Hebrews, it tells us that we are to follow after those who in faith and patience, amen, inherit what has been promised them. So if we're going to uh, receive the promise, then we have to follow after those who in patience and faith. So that means, praise God, if you and I are not going to stagger, then we need to follow after someone who didn't stagger. See, now, 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 uh, now. This is why we got to understand that when the Bible said we are lights of the world, we have to understand that as a light, somebody is watching us, and it's important that we don't stagger because somebody looking at you. How is they going to follow after you? How are they going to follow after us if we're staggering? Oh, they're going to follow after us. The Bible said that we are written epistles that are read by men. Amen. I mean, you know, we are praise God. How are they going to follow after us? They're going to follow after us by the way they see us following after God. And if we're staggering, then guess what? Because of our stagnation of what God has told us, then the Bible says we cannot expect to receive nothing from God. Is it? Because many of us have been staggering at God's promise that we have not received what he promised. When the Bible said that God watches over his word to perform it. And the promises of God means it's God's divine assurance of good. God promised that he going to do good things in our lives. God promised that he's going to make a way out of no way. God promised, amen, that if we ask him anything in his name, he'll do it. God promised that, amen, if, when I pray that if I believe him for whatever I'm praying for, he said it will come to pass. Is it the fact that what I've been praying for has not come to pass because I, am been, I have been staggering? I've been staggering. It's not like, you know, amen, praise God. 
I was going to say, we, we, we always want to take the fact that the Bible said it took Abraham 25 years there for God to perform it, and we think everything got to be a long time. No. God's just looking for our genuine faith. Because there is, whatever he told us before the performance of it, and we receive it, there is a process. So we have to follow the process. Abraham, amen, through patience and faith, in order to receive what God had for him, he had to go through the process. God's not the, he's not a musician or magician. He is a musician, amen. You look and see everything he did. God is music and everything and harmony and everything, but he's not a magician. He made Abraham a promise that took a year to produce anyway. He made him a promise that took a year. The Bible said his body was well past deadness. It was good as dead. It was good as dead. And then he looked over and seen Sarah, and she wasn't no better. And we just two dead folks that have a promise But we gon', we're not going to stagger at the promise because the promise will produce the life. The promise going to produce the life. Not time. It's not time that's going to produce the life. Oh, God, he operates outside of time. Now, God could have God could have did it. God could have did it. Our youngest son, I'm, you know, I don't know why when I get here, I'm always preaching about my children, glory to God. But our youngest son, Elijah, he was born four and a half months early. And when he was born early, you know, your natural mind be like, why come I couldn't go to full term? You know, my wife, she's saying this and we thinking, why, why this happened? I told her, I said, baby, God got something for him to do for a certain season at a certain time, and he had to go ahead and, and get him in the air. I didn't look at the negative of because he was a preemie, he might be, uh, uh, you know, everything wrong with him. God had a particular time. Because each and every one of us have a purpose. What we call an accident was God's plan. I just want to help you not to stagger. Because, number one, what happened was Abraham, he considered not the problem. He considered not the problem. If we're going to follow after those who through patience and faith have inherited the promise that was spoken to them, number one, we got to follow after Abraham who considered not the problem. Too often we look at the problem. That's walking by sight. Come on, we look at the problem. The problem is I don't have enough money. The problem is we shot handed. The problem is this and that. Everybody got a reason for a problem. If I ask everybody in here, name me a problem, somebody's going to say, here's the problem. Here's the problem. If I ask you what's the problem in your life, you're going to say, here's the problem. If I say, what's the problem in the church, you're going to say, here's the problem. What's the problem with the pastor? Here's the problem. What's the problem with you? Or, uh, no. <laughs> Abraham considered not the problem. So if we want to receive the promise, we got to quit looking at the problem. God's bigger than the problem. I say God's bigger than the problem. Amen. What, what, what appears to be so big in our life is because we dwell on it too long. And what we dwell on, we magnify. So when we start dwelling on the promise, guess what? We're going to magnify the promise. We're going to magnify the promise. We're going to magnify the God of promise. Abraham, come on now, y'all. The Bible said he was dead in his body, well past age, but he said he, gave, he grew stronger in his faith, giving glory to God. 
Abraham said, I got a word. I got a word from the Lord. We going to do this? Amen. Sarah came talking about Abraham, how we, he said, uh-uh, no, we going to do this. We got a promise. God has given you a promise. I know in here you have promises that God has made you and made to you, but you got to learn how to magnify the promise. The Bible said he considered not the problem. But well, this is what we have to do. We have to learn how to quit looking at our natural circumstances. That's why I said the Holy Spirit said, rather, we need peace in here. Because, see, the lack of having peace is because we are looking at our circumstances. The Bible said, cast all your cares up on him. For he cares. If I don't care what it is. You got to get to the place, saints of God, where, amen, whatever it is, however small you may think it is, if it's a problem, you got to cast it up on God. If it's a situation, you got to cast it up on God. That's how you're going to walk in victory. The Bible says, cast down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Well, God told you that, amen, you have a promise. God told Abraham, look, I'm going to cause you to be the father of nations. I'm going to cause you to be the father of nations. And Abraham realized that if I'm going to do this at this point in my life, at this stage in my life, I have to learn how not to stagger. 